Aymana Pejvić, my co-moderator and host will be Idro Seferi. Idro, welcome. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, I am very happy to uh, be with here with you. And as we started with uh, the mistake, this topic, I think uh, last night by mixing the names, we already started the topic of being in the other shoes. And maybe uh, we should start with Vigieton here, who uh, uh, likes, I think, to be to run after other people's sh shoes and in a way has <laughs> has been dealing with uh, people's shoes. Why do you like other people's shoes and you don't choose yours? Why, why do you like Why you do projects shoes? that uh, provoke? Okay. Well, good morning and hello, everybody. Yes. Um, well, it's, a, it's not an easy question. I think it requires uh, some explanations around uh, the work we do. Uh, I write plays, and they uh, are some of them staged in Pristina by uh, Chandra Multimedia that I found a couple of years ago. And in some cases, they get produced by uh, other companies outside of Kosovo or in the region or Europe and so on. Uh, it was actually in uh, 2011 when I went out of the National Theatre for, as some of you might uh, remember, in that time we had an invitation from Atelier 2012 uh, Theatre here in Belgrade to uh, bring one of the productions of uh, National Theatre. I was for a short time, for three years, working at the National Theatre as the artistic director. So this was the uh, invitation, and it would have been the very first uh, theater play produced by a public theater in Kosovo uh, being presented in Belgrade. And uh, we accepted the invitation, and we wanted to bring a theater play, but we were aware that it's not going to happen, or it's not going to be that easy to, uh, to happen. So. Uh, Anyway, so the, the story is long, but what I wanted to say is that this was the period I started to realize that it doesn't make sense that after I go out of the National Theatre, I return to produce some sort of, uh, I would call it, boring place I was doing by then. I mean, place that, you know, people were not that curious to, to see them, and then they were not attracting any attention, and they were not dealing with relevant topics that started, I start, I, I felt uh, are much more vibrant and uh, actual, so to say. So when I returned at Chandra Multimedia, then we started to exploit so-called political topics and uh, to try to, I mean, I call this uh, fight with your own uh, demons. So it was a period when we realized that Yes, you can uh, you can fight with the demons of the enemy, but is it possible that you fight your own demons? And this is where the you know when the fight as artistic fight starts because you then <coughs> you know you you project not only something that is visible to everybody. I mean, some sort of uh, enemy that is you know constructed by by the society or is, is there visible, but then you try to investigate what are the, the demons that yourself uh, you don't want to see or you are not able to see because the society is not uh, is not allowing you to see. And so we try, try to then uh, bring on stage topics around war crimes, topics around uh, nationalism, topics around uh, xenophobia, uh, homophobia, and so on and so on. And then it was actually that the audience started to uh, not to like it, but also to see this as a relevant, uh, relevant step in setting up some sort of dialogue with topics that uh, you know, they felt are, are important to be, to be discussed. In this sense, uh, it also uh, it should be said that uh, this period was also a period in which 
uh, an, an intense cooperation started with uh, artists from 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 Serbia. Exchange, really intensive exchange in literature and theater. So we had uh, or shows coming here, and we had uh, Serbian writers and theater makers uh, presenting the work in, in Pristina. Uh, first under the police uh, presence, and after this was not required because uh, then people, the audience, started to see this as a normal act of uh, exchange. So what was shocking, what was act of <coughs> betrayal, what was, I mean, related to some conspirative theories became a normal act of, of exchange, of cooperation, of, uh, you know, communication between artists. And this uh, this cooperation, I believe, it produced uh, lots of uh, impact in, in both societies. It's hard to measure the, the, the level of this impact, but I, I believe, I mean, I can, let's say when we first brought our shows here, the, the, the comments, the hateful comments we received in, in these uh, Serbian media portals were like really 90% very, uh, Critical and you know full of hate and racistic and now this this is like below fifty percent. You know whenever we come, we mostly get also positive comments of people who who, who see this as a normal uh, exchange we are supposed to have. I would like to ask you another question. Uh, we are very sorry that we didn't organize a protest for you this time, but uh, maybe it's better. Uh, how are Serbian artists perceived in Kosovo when you organize an event? Because in Serbia we don't get too much information about uh, this. Uh, and do you have a presence? And do media come actually in the events and uh, why? Uh, you know, we have this uh, opportunity that most of the Serbian artists here don't have my generation and lots of other uh, artists there do speak Serbian, do, can read Serbian books, can read Serbian newspapers. And uh, of course, Serbian culture, Serbian language, Serbian artists were present in, in Kosovo in, in this whole period. And they, for a short period, this, I mean, in, in 1999 to 2010, maybe there was a short period of non-communication, but Nevertheless, that was not very that much shocking, so to say, to have Serbian artists or Serbian uh, cultural activities being presented in in Kosovo. Well, I think it was a bit different with the with the Albanian artists coming after the war in Belgrade. The level of uh, wonder was bigger. I mean, it was like I remember when we produced those two books from Pristina with Love and from Belgrade with Love. I received comments saying, wow, this is the same level of quality that you find in Serbia or everywhere else. It's like, so what, you know? Or people saying, we, somebody wrote me, we believe that Albanian literature is still living in some romantic, you know, uh, ages, so to say. They had basically few ideas of, of what was going on in there. Well, we could, you know, read them. We still read uh, Serbian literature, but those who want to read or who, who, who speak or who understand Serbian can do that, and lots of, of, of us can do that. So, uh, of course, in the beginning it was not, not easy because of the, of the, of the circumstances, and, uh, but this changed very fast. Uh, I mean, what was complicated in 2008-9 to have uh, Serbian artists reading in, in Pristina, let's say, in our festival, but was not easy, it became easy two or three years ago. It became easy also because people started to, uh, to see that when you bring, you know, Sasha Ilic or Tomislav Markovic or uh, Milor Zhivainovic, you know, they, they share the same, same human values, same artistic uh, ideas as, let's say, Arben Idrizi or Shvatim Selmoni or some other artists. And it wasn't easy to connect, it was easy to accept them and to see that, in fact, they, they should be considered and they are considered as, you know, as friends, as people that, uh, yeah. 
that you should not be uh, afraid. I'm speaking for the, for the perception of, of ordinary audience because among the, the artists there was immediate connection. I mean, most of them became all friends. Sasha is now uh, co-artistic director of, uh, of uh, our International Literature Festival, Polyp. So he's uh, every year there and we do lots of other projects with uh, Vladimir Arsenovich and uh, Crocodile. Well, the opposite was a little bit di di different, you know. It was different that uh, the, the uh, media uh, uh, attraction, not attraction, but the interest, attention was bigger. I remember when we came here first with one flew over the cost of a theater, we had more uh, journalists in the audience than audience in Sezakada. So it was really huge attention, also because of the of the topic of the of the play, and uh, second, I mean, the, the, it is also interesting to, to explain how the, the the political circumstances were also having an impact in our work, because sometimes we had police presence in Belgrade in some cases when we uh, played in Kragujevac. Let's say it was necessary that police would accompany us, but not in Cizakada. But then the police presence was required. Uh, after this drone incident that, you know, became famous because, uh, you know, people, the organizers felt that uh, after this incident it's easy that somebody would, you know, try to distract the, the performance. So we played this, uh, uh, this show, uh, One Flew Over the Cost of a Theater, for the second time in Belgrade, and first time the police presence was not uh, needed, second time it was needed. I, I remember the organizer. This now I tell as a, as a joke. He he was invited by the by the chief police here in Belgrade, uh, in order, uh, I mean, to explain about the the show that uh, was coming to his festival. I forgot the name of the festival uh, in, that we, we we came here. But the chief police asked him, "So why you invited this show from Kosovo? You see, it's complicated now. We have to organize." police patrol and, you know, lots of police around the theater. Can you find another play? He said, no, no, it's, it's done. We have to have this play from Kosovo. And then the chief police asked the organizer, well, what is this play about? You know, it has the title Kosovo. He said, I don't think that Kosovo is, title is forbidden in, in Serbia or so. And then the police was reading the, the description of the play. One flew over the Kosovo theater, declaration of Kosovo independence, corruption, political... And then the police told him, Oh, but this is good for us, like for Serbia, <laughs> because it shows that the, you know it's, there is corruption there and not, things are not functioning. And so, and the organizer told him, "I don't know what is good for you, but it's good for it's good for us as the audience, as you know, the organizers of the festival." Maybe it's good for him also. He becomes a critic or something of, yeah. of theater. I, I don't think he <laughs> reading, it, but reading okay. your place, so you should bring more. Should we ask uh, how is this thing yeah. in Belgrade? Yeah, uh, well, who would like to comment on this? Marian? You, uh, you yeah. look like the guy who would know. So, yeah. Know yeah. <laughs> uh, what? I mean, I'm, uh, I'm not yeah. sure if I understood the question. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, uh, well, I think it's, it's not that... Uh, it's not that good, I mean, because uh, mm, we gathered here, but, he, you know, like, uh, well, kind of usual suspects, you know, and uh, uh, most of the literary scene simply don't uh, know anything about uh, literature from Kosovo. I mean, that's simple fact. And uh, I think that... Uh, Probably, I mean, there are a bunch of reasons for that, but uh, uh, first of all, I mean, first uh, there's, a, well, you know, political tensions. Then uh, there are not uh, much translations, of course. Uh, and, uh, well, I don't know what, what else, but... Uh, you know, uh, and it's uh, uh, when I say it, I mean it's not only that uh, 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 that nationalism, you know, is behind all of that. I mean, it's simply 
uh, uh, not too many books uh, or very few of them and people just don't know what's what's going on down there so uh, so I think that uh, like like I said I mean I, I think that that most of, of Serbian writers uh, don't know anything about about Kosovo type uh, literature or Albanian literature in general. That that's that's my my point of view. I mean that that's my opinion. Uh, I uh, you know when when I when I talk to the to the colleagues and when we mm, you know talk about books or writers, I I, I just can't remember that uh, nobody ever mentioned some Albanian writer. If you, of course, I mean, uh, uh, maybe those, you know, like I said, usual suspects, Sasha Ilić or, or Toma Markovic, I mean, guys who, who, who you know, uh, cooperate uh, with, with Kosovo writers, but, uh, but uh, uh, for, for, for most of the scene, I mean, it simply don't exist. I mean, like, I don't know, Lithuania or something, I mean, like uh, Far East or and uh, I mean that's bad. I I I, I think that uh, uh, last night I talked to somebody and I said uh, I think that uh, you know I, I I'm not sure uh, if there are uh, two nations in Europe which uh, don't know each other uh, 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 in that range like uh, Serbs and Albanians. I mean. Uh, with all the wars and crimes and all that shit, I mean, it's it's like uh, I think that that people just don't know each other. I mean, it's it's very bad. So, okay, let's make things better. Yeah. Uh, is there any way to uh, support the interest? Uh, what, things like what comes uh, first? Projects like this, but. Uh, I think that uh, uh, you know uh, maybe it's uh, 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 I think that from Serbian uh, perspective it's uh, probably a bit harder uh, uh, because of uh, because of all the things that I said uh, but uh, you know uh, if we w if we try to uh, present things not like uh, political but like art, you know, to, to put the focus on 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 on, on something that's uh, uh, deeply artistic, uh, and uh, maybe that's a good way, you know. I mean, uh, for example, not to call somebody because we like him politically, but because he writes good books poetry or I don't know drama or, or novels or whatever I mean so you know to to to, to put aside that political political uh, uh, story maybe it's a better way you know to uh, to integrate I think I mean by, by my opinion I mean no no I think that's that's clear and I think there is no in most of the cases, uh, most of this exchange that has been done was as purely as a cultural act, I mean, cultural exchange. But then, of course, having in mind the context in which both societies uh, went through or are going through, then it, this exchange then becomes as a political act as well. I mean, you cannot separate that, and the, it doesn't make sense to separate. I mean, when a Serbian writer reads in Pristina, uh, it is also a, a, a cultural act, but it is also a political act because then you know people will uh, comment. Uh, 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 okay, I'll, I'll try to so make it. Is not bad. No, I mean, yeah, no, of course, no, no, no. I, I, I'll, let's let let's put it this way. Uh, maybe uh, I don't know. You know, to talk about uh, poetical things. I mean, right now, you know, what's your influences? What you like to read? I mean, what's uh, let's say what. Well, you know, poetical, but not 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 political. I mean, first poetical and then political. Let's say, it like this. I mean, if if you if you understood. Uh, but um, hi, I'm George. Um, but when you say poetry, prose, writing, everything comes from life. So 
and some of the work may have, let's say, not political influence, but uh, cynicism or irony with politics and with its impact on everyday life here in Serbia or uh, in Kosovo. So in a way, I agree with Yeton on the political issue, but if it derives everything from the daily life or our issues, and then it come it can come through in the artistic in the artistic way of expression. I think it's, I think it's, I in understand. my opinion it's hard to divide the everyday life and and create and, and creating something in in writing. May I, I think I understood what you just said, and it is it is not really that we should uh, abandon the political debate because uh, we are uh, we are writers and uh, this is what we do for a living. <laughs> but uh, the 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 point is the 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 point the point the point he made I think is that as writers as literature scholars as drama writers as uh, researchers our debate should be more con concentrated in uh, stylistical domain of 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 literature so basically I think his point uh, I'm I'm, I'm I'm sorry, I'm talking about you. I, I think his point was rather than we, that we have to deal with how literature expresses rather than what literature expresses in the, in the, in the domain of uh, uh, dealing with stylistics more with, than with, uh, with uh, content. Yeah. Well, uh, just so, uh, just shortly, I think that should be really our, our ambition or the ambition of this, the goal that we come to that point that somebody comes from Pristina to read here and uh, they discuss about what he's reading and not that he is from, from Pristina. So this becomes irrelevant and that should be the, the vision. But that, of course, it, so far it was not possible because you come with Kosovo in shoulder here and you come with Serbia in shoulder there. Yeah, so I was thinking, um, I was thinking how many writers uh, from Kosovo I know I was, uh, without Googling and how many of them I actually read. It's, uh, I don't know, five names. And uh, first of them, <laughs> I mean, uh, first of them was uh, Jevdet Bayrai, that was uh, the poet who was first translated into Serbian. Mm -hmm. And uh, I took that book from the library, not because I'm that much into poetry, because I'm not, <laughs> and uh, I just <laughs> sorry, <laughs> and uh, I just wanted to 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 read something from from Kosovo from a person who lives there because I'm not connected to Kosovo at all. I was born in Eastern Serbia, now live in Belgrade. Uh, no, no one speak Albanian around me. My enemy, I cannot see my enemy anywhere. Uh, <laughs> Ima, <laughs> <laughs> but they, they, they speak Serbian. <laughs> but because Serbian people. <laughs> no, <laughs> come on. <laughs> Serbian people from. Uh, they don't understand, they don't want to deal living in a. We all live in a bubble. People from Kosovo are living together, or they used to live together, or they, they are trying to live now. And uh, that's the totally different communication we, uh, we have we who don't we I would say we we who don't speak or understand Albania we need a translator we need something some some mid person to 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 make a communication uh, and that's a great handicap for me the like I'm not uh, in a position to 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 hear what I want to hear uh, I'm not in a position to to I don't know, to make the connection and to, to spread my boundaries, to, to break the walls. And uh, when we uh, get together, that political, what Yaton said, we have that uh, no matter how much we, we are or we aren't uh, connected to our national identity, it goes on our shoulder. And it is always like, I don't know, uh, how someone sees you, it is uh, not something that you cannot pay attention at all. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm so frustrated because speaking foreign language is not my best. <laughs> and uh, I cannot uh, always come to that language. And uh, I cannot express myself uh, in the best way. And uh, uh, listening 
all of you last night and uh, making that communication makes me, I don't feel more normal. Yeah, it is. Yeah, okay. As always, Yeva. Yeah, um, now, I think, I think, as Yaton said, in Kosovo we have a, a, a huge advantage in this, uh, or maybe at least big advantage in, in, in knowing this, because uh, not only that the, the elder, elder generations knew Serbian and had the opportunity to read most of the Serbian writers, but the main Serbian writers are translated in Albanian. Uh, I read Ivo Andris in Albanian, I read Danilo Kish in Albanian, I read Milorad Pavic in Albanian, I read Sasha Ilis in Albanian. So most of them are uh, translated and published by, I may add this as well because it matters, by the biggest publishing houses in Tirana. So they gather attention and they have a proper uh, public approach uh, towards, towards their work. Um, First, I didn't see this happening uh, for the Albanian or Kosovo writers uh, writers here. Uh, now I think it's slightly changing with the massive contribution of the man we have here, Yaton Neziraj. And uh, yeah, he's not there; he's here, uh, and uh, his cooperators in uh, in uh, in Serbia. So now this generation that is in thirties, forties possibly 20s, um, is making a step uh, towards towards the, the <laughs> other. And I think what, what we have to do now is just uh, n not, on not only just sit back and enjoy, but uh, try, to, try to boost without forcing it. Because forcing may, may probably be perceived as unnatural. And everything that is perceived as unnatural collapses. Uh, so I think they are doing a pretty good job, and, and projects li like this really contribute to uh, to that. Uh, I mean, now I know some other Serbian writers. I will for sure read if they come in Albanian or if they uh, actually are in English. Uh, so yeah, this this is pretty much all I had to say, and uh, I I think this is changing, and it's changing fast, and I'm happy to see it. Yeah. Thank you, Azem. There is a great book in Serbian of a great Albanian author, Edi Rama, so you all can <laughs> read it. No, I'm sorry, <laughs> I'm sorry I, I have to respond to this. Ed, Ed, Edi Rama is Albani Albanian prime minister, and you, anyway, you, have, you have his books you have his books in uh, in Serbian, but there is no book of Fatos like Kongoli in Serbian, and there is no book of Ridvan Dibra in Serbian. And there are no three books really? in Serbian. Really? Oh, I'm so happy to hear that. Yes. Thank you. Thank you for correcting. Yes, me. yes, it's called Pasia Koja in Serbian. Uh, but we would ask, I would like to ask Arber, who makes propaganda here, and also, as he would say in his story, you're a wannabe writer because you're a cultural journalist. So, <laughs> how do you see it from your double angle, the, all this relation? And do we make too much drama? Uh, be when we have this exchange that it should be somehow normal? Well, uh, no, well, as you mentioned, I'm also a cultural journalist and I, uh, now it's been a year, I also work for EU in Kosovo, so I'm a bit all mixed up and, uh, but I have a first-hand experience because I was, <clears throat> I, th I think I'm a child of these kind of exchanges, I, I'm a product of, of, uh, of the first, I mean, when I was uh, here in the residency in 2014. So for me, uh, being a 20 something in my early 20s and coming to Belgrade and having my own apartment in Novi Belgrade was really very exotic and, but also mixed feelings because you come and then in the border you are again going into retrospective uh, of the 90s and they do a kind of a problems so they want to somehow torture you a bit before uh, letting you go in a country that somehow politically still considers you as their citizen but they still control you because they give you a paper that you should come back after some days but in general you pass this experience and then you can reflect upon it so for me it was it was, I mean I believe that uh, 
<clears throat> these kind of exchanges are giving voice to young people. So for me at that point, uh, when I was when I came to in, to Belgrade in 2014, I already had something published, and I already was someone in Pristina, but not because of my literary writings, but because of I worked as a journalist, and George here was my editor back then in Zuri. So yeah, I mentioned it because I yeah, why not? He was a good editor, of course, and uh, and he still is for someone else. But uh, yeah, but as it, I mean, what I think in the journalistic, if you look at it from the journalistic perspective, I think that uh, it's really it's it's a sexy topic, I think, for journalists here and there to kind of follow up on what's happening within these exchanges. So, for example, if we have authors coming to Polyp. It's really interesting because I think that somehow the Serbian authors who come there take all the attention uh, rather than the other authors that, that you invite. It's the same here. I mean, I had a lot of interviews back then when I was in Belgrade. Uh, I want to say about new voices. I do realize that these kind of projects will always have as their reference point some well-known people, I mean, some well-known voices, established voices like like for example, Yeton, he's not, he's established now, like he's not a young voice, but some of us here are really young people and young people in the writing process. So for us, I think this kind of exchange really is putting us in the map also in our countries, because for me, Belgrade was kind of a starting point and then I went back to Pristina and now I'm still not very in the scene, I think, but uh, I'm I'm as much as I want to be, so uh what i think is that these uh, these kind of exchanges are really promising i do believe that they have an impact i don't think that they have an overnight impact but i do believe that the impact should take some time and uh, all of us here are have been in some parts connected to both polypore crocodile festivals so i think you can see it from here and also i do believe in the bad publicity so any kind of publicity to me is a good publicity and uh uh, yeah, I think new generations will come and we can spread the word. And also, I did my, as Idra said, my journalistic propaganda uh, when it was needed in with a very positive tone. Oh, well, um... I have to be honest, uh, a friend of mine who is a very, um, mm, well, he's a very well-educated uh, young person, uh, he asked me, uh, why do I feel the need to uh, participate uh, um, in, in these kinds of projects uh, that tend to bring together uh, people, and uh, why do I feel that a project is needed at all to bring together people? And then I told him that um, he answered his own question, and that I also don't um, I don't feel comfortable with the fact that um, you need to uh, write a project and then uh, explain it to an institution in order to meet Albanian or Kosovo writers. But this is how it is. So I um, I choose to be a part of this because uh, I think this is the only way that I can maybe hear, which happened la uh, last night and will happen tonight, um, something translated from a young Kosovo author. This, there is no way that I can do it. And I was thinking uh, last night, uh, Anna, to, to email you so you can uh, send me the translations so I can forward we will, it. We will prepare the book. Yeah, oh, great. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because With I wanted to Serbian forward it um, text, so, uh, yeah, right yeah, away yeah. To, to some people that I know. And I remember because um, um, uh, I'm uh, essentially a screenwriter, so um, I, I work um, in many film festivals and so on. So what happened is that uh, this uh, Doku Fest in Pristina, um, uh, many uh, prison, sorry, um, it uh, gathered a lot of young people. I think uh, in I think around five years ago or something from Belgrade. And I remember um, many colleagues, my colleagues, went there and they came back. Uh, completely shocked and they told me uh, it's great there you know uh, it's amazing we we didn't um, we didn't have the um, the opportunity ever to get the real picture of what it looks like to go there and we thought that nothing happens and that uh, the festival will be um, um, completely you know um, uh, free of any um, how can I say um, 
uh, they thought that the, the fact that they were invited was also uh, only political and they were skeptical about it. But then they realized uh, that this happened, what Marian said, they weren't invited because of uh, um, anything uh, like, uh, like this, but because of the actual need uh, for exchange uh, from other young people who worked at this festival. So this is the first time that I had the opportunity to hear that uh, these things are starting to happen because yes, I come from film, not from literature essentially. So. Um, this is what came to mind. And uh, also, uh, when Yasna said how many Albanian writers I read, I, I don't think I read um, uh, any until uh, Dorontina Basha's uh, uh, play was translated in Artifacts uh, book and it won the award. And I watched it and I was amazed. I really liked the play. And I had uh, the opportunity to, to have it in my hands. So bottom line is I think uh, Yes, uh, as long as we need these kinds of projects, I think that uh, we need to embrace them and then try and work together uh, other ways uh, of communicating, not only um, funded. Oh, yeah, okay. uh, thank you. I would like to ask you, as you don't live here, I assume, yeah. and then you are the smart serb from this joke that uh, talks to the other one from outside. How do you see us from outside, all this thing? Do you miss it? Well, I, I'm quite a newbie in being, um, not being in Serbia. I mean, I just moved in December. It's not like I have a, a whole new, uh, you know, like background and, uh, and, and a wide perspective. But uh, for me, uh, I think um, deciding to come, come here uh, was not a practical decision, meaning I just moved, I had to come back, but I, th I think that projects like this need to be supported. So you need to, because the whole cultural paradigm and the market uh, dictate and uh, the fact that infra infrastructure of both Kosovo and Serbia do not support um, this kind of exchange. And I don't think that's just the problem bet between Kosovo and Serbia. I mean, we experience the same problem in all XU countries. When when we would go to Montenegro in festival, we would realize that we don't know anything about the scene in Montenegro, and we only get to learn it and and get to know it because of the the festivals usually organized by individuals or group of enthusiasts or group of non-government um, projects or just publishing houses that are actually quite independent. So. And then you, you get to think, okay, um, being in, uh, in, in other, peop other people's shoes for me now is literal because I, I live with, in another country and I think the language barrier is what, what makes the, um, the barrier uh, the, the most visible, like uh, the feeling of, of not, not being uh, a local. So um, that means that from, from, from one way, uh, translation is very important aspect on a, of any kind of exchange because, okay, you have like um, generations of people who know Serbian or don't know Serbian, that's fine. But I think that applies for all marginalized cultures in, in shops, not just because of the political climate. You would most naturally have like American authors, English authors, then of course French, blah, blah, blah. So all the... Um, you know the, the the dominant and mainstream cultures. So the exchange between marginalized countries and even the countries that have some political um, background that is that is quite touchy. Um, the the less book will you will you will you get from from them, of course. So um, I think that in situations like this, it always comes like in a in a bottom up uh, kind of way. You don't have the the cultural um, system. You don't have the um, the system that actually has a clear cultural policies, or um, and that does just apply. That doesn't just apply for the cultural exchange between countries. We don't have like uh, a quality cultural policy in general, and because you know post-war countries suffer from these things. Of course, you know, the the budgets for cultural like minimal. You know, so. Um, Everything that happens, happens bottom up. You know, like one person wants to make the effort 
a group of people wants to make the festival, um, organizations like Crocodile or, or, or similar uh, create projects like this, but it doesn't come from governments. It doesn't come from um, the actual um, uh, people who could make the most effort. So um, exactly what Masha said uh, last night, uh, being able to just to, to read it in on your language is what makes a difference because when you have a cultural uh, language barrier, that's it. I mean, you're not going to be able to read Estonian writer just because you really want it unless you have it translated. And th the two ways are either to have a, a better level of translations to English and, you know, have the, 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 the reach of the, the local scene the widest possible, or um, to make the effort to have translations between, of course, the actual countries. And so that brings us to the point that the responsibility of individuals working on, on in a cultural scene is much higher than it would be um, in systems like Germany to get back to your questions when the actual government policy have its own, has its own budgets for you know exploring Eastern European literature I mean they have departments at university that just deal with these subjects or like you know literature from Baltic countries or literature for, from African countries we don't have the, the infrastructure here that does that for you. So it has to come um, from within, from us, from writers, from translators, from uh, cultural uh, activists. And I think uh, that is the biggest challenge because then we have much, much um, bigger responsibility to participate, to talk about it, to talk about it until it becomes purely stylistic conversation you know, to just you know, overcome the fact that uh, we are making this debate now when the tensions between Kosovo and Serbia are again getting higher and higher. So this is the important time to talk about that. Uh, just to add one thing, uh, as, uh, as Yeton, I always feel like I'm this kind of nest beschmutzer, so the person who shits in its own nest. But I feel that Serbian society is very, very self-centered, uh, not only l uh, liter uh, in literary circle, but around uh, um, uh, the general uh, audience. So for example, our first guest in the Writer-in-Residence program was Ervina Khalili, and she came here scared. She came, but uh, she was, she did not know what to expect and so on and so forth. And then she asked me, uh, so what if I speak Albanian on the street? I said, yeah, I said, well, yeah, I think it's, yeah. I don't think anybody would recognize. Uh, and then she said, really? I said, yes, I mean, your sister is coming, so let's let's give it a try. And we were walking uh, in Knez Mihailova Street, and the two of them were speaking uh, Albanian, and then uh, one uh, lady came and said, is this Italian? Uh, and uh, so she changed her paradigm completely, um, but it's not a positive thing. It's um, uh, the thing that you can speak Albanian uh, in, in the streets of Belgrade means that nobody knows uh, how Albanian sounds. And that is also depressing, because this is the neighboring country. And this has been uh, a minority language in Yugoslavia. And uh, we, uh, I'm almost 40 years old. Now I know how Albanian sounds. But I, I guess 10 years ago, I w it would be hard for me to recognize it uh, on the street. So this uh, nationalism uh, and hatred towards uh, Kosovo Albanian is very self-centered. Uh, and I don't think it has anything to do with what contemporary Kosovo is, since most of the people don't have any idea what is going on there. Uh, and 95% of the news that we receive are negatively intoned, 5% are positively intoned, and culture is absolutely uh, not present in any, both negative uh, uh, and positive uh, uh, news uh, um, uh, media outlets. So, yes, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, just maybe a bit of uh, s uh, short of uh, maybe optimistic comment that uh, 
which might be speculative, but that is my personal impression how the figure of the enemy has been transformed and has changed in this last period in Kosovo. So if the, the, the enemy was or were Serbs after the war, any, any Serb in, in Kosovo or in Serbia or elsewhere they were living, in, in a short period of time, this uh, changed. The Serbs in Kosovo actually were seen slowly as a kind of national interest. Where we started to collaborate with local Serbian artists in Kosovo, it was, you know, you're collaborating with the enemy. But this changed soon after because uh, involving them in, in cultural life or in, in the life in Kosovo was seen as, you know, national interest. We have to show that we take care of the minorities. And the, the, the figure of the enemy was shifted to, you know, Serbs in Serbia. Okay, it's fine to collaborate with Serbs in Kosovo, but it's not fine to do that with Serbs in Serbia. But this also changed. So it is changing, actually. B people don't see it as, a, as any kind of danger if you are exchanging uh, literature or theater or any other cultural event with, with uh, artists from Serbia. They are projecting, at least uh, in Kosovo, they are projecting the enemy in the political elite in Serbia. I mean, that's because they see that uh, any danger that might come, it's coming from, from political elite. And I think if you are able, if both societies are able to, to create this kind of projection of the real enemy, that is political, uh, corrupted political elites in Kosovo, corrupted political elites in Serbia, and they see that if any danger might come, then it will come from, from both, from those, those groups. And I think this is a, a good step. And uh, I believe that the, the, this exchange, this uh, uh, cooperation, you know, created some this kind of path to uh, in in both societies. Thank you. Uh, I would like to ask in this part: What do you uh, think, and do you uh, do we also seek for some quality in this exchange? Because uh, a few times I went to see theater plays, and I didn't like them, uh, even they were from Kosovo. So I skipped writing about it. And also in Serbia, yeah, sometimes I didn't just because it was like that. Do we have really try? Are we interested to get to know uh, quality stuff, no matter where they come from? Because I guess if there would be a theater play from Jamaica, people would go just to see it, how it's there. Is there interest like like that here? Well, okay, this is again maybe a better question for maybe Yeton or Vladimir because they are kind of organizing this kind of events and kind of uh, curating, let's say, the p participants and so on. But from my experience when I was in Polyp, for example, it was different because it was not strictly oriented Although, like, somehow thematic core was, okay, ex-Yugoslavia and maybe still especially collaboration between Beton and uh, Chandra and then Serbia and Kosovo, but it's anyhow international. So maybe this is a way out of this kind of binary thinking and polarization and insisting on something, putting, in this uh, putting it in this political frame, nevertheless, it's still art. And then by positioning it a bit like above, you are right. So if we invite Jamaican writer and Kosovo writer and Serbian writer, then it's another thing that if we invite just <laughs> Serbian and Kosovo writers. So um, uh, from my point of view, Polyp had a really high um, curatorial potential and quality. I've really met interesting people and um, writers from all over the world, so I wouldn't uh, say that there was only uh, interest in like some kind of political correctness or like fulfilling the norm that now we are meeting each other and so on. Uh, in this case, okay, it's, it's framed differently, so it really has this focus only on this, but I also think, especially in this kind of moment, it's also kind of necessary. So, but, yeah. Uh, do you, uh, as a writer coming from, let's say, a small language, as a, a dramatist or playwright coming from a small language, do you feel the, does, does your uh, nationality uh, come before your writing or uh, the, uh, 
Do they invite you, for example, to participate in a festival because you are a Serbian or a Bosnian uh, playwright? Or uh, is your quality of your writing precedes uh, where you come from? Do you feel burdened by your uh, nationality when it comes to your artistic work? Yeah, I mean, um, but it's an even more complex question. I mean, um, <laughs> I don't even know how would I identify myself. And I think it's really insisting on this is also very... Do you feel pushed to uh, give uh, an, an identity? Of course, because in every fucking festival, even the most progressive ones, in like Venice Biennale is based on national pavilions. It's not based on in a kind of international socialistic ideal. And so it's insane. Like we are really pushed into like identitarian politics and it's always like when I was living in Germany then I would put three countries I would put Bosnia, Serbia and Germany because like I think and most more recently I what I like is actually what international artists are trying to kind of affirm is okay uh, stating the city you live in like Berlin based artist or whatever and then like don't even go there what is my like heritage so I think this is kind of uh, this might help but this is more also in visual scene of course when we are writers and when we are very based in language then we have this kind of problematics but for us um, uh, yeah the problem is that that we don't come from such a small language it's just that we think it's different than other three languages I mean which is not so this is one layer of it and then for Albanian of course it's different because you are right there is this hege hegemonic like approach from Serbo Croatian towards any other languages of Yugoslavia, Slovenian, Macedonian, and then also Albanian. So I think like we were always assuming that everyone speaks Serbo-Croatian everywhere and just taking it for granted. When I was in Kosovo in residency, I also was not really comfortable in speaking Serbo-Croatian, but from different reasons. I was not afraid that someone would um, like attack me, but I was really trying to avoid this hegemonic assumption like yeah you must for sure know my language but then it was also funny because then political correctness pushes you i go to bakery and i order something in english and they are like what the fuck are you trying to tell me <laughs> and then they ask me where i'm from i say from bosnia they're okay fuck tell us you want this buddha or anything you know so it's a bit like uh, it's uh, <laughs> It's uh, very di difficult to decide what to like to do, but yeah, I do. I f did feel this for a while, but then since I lived in Germany, I kind of uh, have agents now there and so on. I am not anymore only regarded as something exotic from Balkans, all because I also somehow surpassed these topics because most recently I was writing about like sexuality and love and something that's not really like regard yeah it is political but not in this sense uh, that they are wanting from us so this was a bit like okay maybe we don't want this from you but now more and more recently it's becoming also kind of okay so it's really but again it's a personal fight it's not a systematic uh, thing of course we are still expected to stay the nation and of course we are still expected to write on certain topics and so on and so on so this is maybe not a very good example because I really spent a lot of time there and like I was trying to do something else for myself, but not, not for the language, it's impossible. Thank you. Uh, I have to tell a short story like that. A friend of mine from here, Yelena, went to Kosovo because she's a lawyer and very scared. In prison she ordered uh, something, but she wanted to have pickles. And then the guy didn't know what it is. He went, after half an hour, he said, uh, I'm sorry we don't have these pickles and I don't know what it is so she explained the jar and the thing and then the guy said Turshia <laughs> <laughs> and she was very scared you know because then he said that he was googling for half an hour to know what this thing is so this is what we kind of live are you uh, an Albanian writer are you uh, how would you <coughs> explain this thing because we came to a topic here talking but mm -hmm. we still are kind of getting together from sort of two sides so how and how it's for you to be a writer at all in Pristina uh, yeah this is my first time here in Belgrade and uh, uh, honestly I expected more like uh, 
different uh, scenario. Uh, some of my friends in uh, Jakova, they said you will literally end up in the in the ditch somewhere. But I failed to see the monsters and the and the bad things that is portrayed in the media. Uh, this idea of the alienation and uh, uh, this portrait of um, Serbians and Kosovars, it's like mildly exaggerated that we fail to see the human behind the picture it's portrayed. All of us, in my opinion, are like, uh, we just, uh, who? Uh, so uh, we are portrayed like uh, monsters, and uh, I was going to say that politics uh, ma made us, <coughs> for example, you are Serbians, act this way. You have to hate Albanians, you have to do this, you have to do that, and for us it's like, you are Kosovars, you've been suffering from this and that, and, and creating a whole cy cycle of hate hatred and vengeance, and uh, just not going to go away by uh, continu continuing this cycle, only by uh, this kind of programs, uh, debating, and uh, through creative writings, probably will end up somewhere less worse than this situation. Thank you. Uh, I can ask Judge to, um, to explain yourself because you are like basically for how many countries? Four, three, oh, two? Four, four. Three and a half. Well, <laughs> I'm from Montenegro, Albania from Montenegro, live in Pristina, uh, educated in Albania, Tirana. My wife, she's by origin from Macedonia, so it's it's a mix Your of mother is from prison. Prison, yes, my mother from prison, and um, but all all of this gives this charm because I can read. And you're Albanian. Montenegrin, right? Well, and now <laughs> it's it's a problem because when I go back to Montenegro, they say, "Ah, you Albanians from Kosovo," and when I come back to Pristina, they say, "Ah, yes, you Albanians from Montenegro." So you're always a foreigner in in this kind of relation with your old ho home country and the new home country. But the thing is, it's I see it as a as a positive thing because I can read in not only Serbo-Croatian but also Serbian, Croatian, Bosnian, Herzegovinian. Now, now there's we have Mont Montenegro with she, she, and some other je, shede, ubiga shekirom. Something like it's interesting to hear, and uh, I see it as a as a as a reality that happened in the Balkans in the last 30, 40 years, deriving from the old Yugoslav uh, cultural, artistic uh, scenery to the films and things we enjoyed together. But um, I, I, I'm very fond of activities like this. Why? Because they have charm. And charm comes from something not so good known. You would like to discover, you would like to see, you would like to experience. And here is the issue that also Marian spoke and uh, Azim and the others about translation. I feel lucky because I can read in an awful large number of <laughs> former Yugoslavian languages, but that's a, as a, a, it's a positive thing. And uh, also you said that uh, people don't know the sound of Albanian in, in some places in Serbia, like in Belgrade, but also youngsters in Pristina, they don't know the sound of Serbian. So... My kids, when hear somebody speaking Serbian, say, what kind of language is that? Is that Spanish, English, or whatever? Well, my youngest daughter knows English, but she doesn't do that question. But others, they, they, uh, they don't have the sound. But, and sometimes, sometimes, most of the times, having possibility to hear it, it's sometimes more intriguing than to read it. And that, uh, this is the, the, no, the uh, sound what makes it more desirable to, to go through it and see what it's all about. Uh, you mentioned Estonian, so if you would know an expression in Estonian and you would like it to hear it and read it and not stop only in uh, curses and saying hello or good morning in the 
other, uh, let's say, foreign language. Uh, these are the most uh, used uh, expressions in Idro, is that so? Yes, so thank so you. So when you want to curse somebody or to say thanks or hello or greet your mother, we I all learn in, I that. do it in Serbian, I like <laughs> it. <laughs> and, uh, it has a lot of potential. Yeah, and um, maybe if there would be a more extensive translation between the, the two cultures, that would be an, a positive impact in defining the subgroups of Kosovo Albanian, Montenegro Albanian, or Albanian Albanian, and so on. Thanks. Thank you. I would like only one last question, if I can add, because uh, I am very uh, surprised that uh, Albanians and Serbs sitting together and we uh, never mentioned Vucic and Taci in this conversation for one hour and 15 minutes. <laughs> so I want to be the party breaker here. <laughs> You know, is it possible, Yeton, that we can do another, like half, uh, one hour and a half, and not mention them in our lives? In fact, uh, my next question, I had a question, not a comment, was around this. I mean, it might be connected to this uh, topic. And my wonder, my question, because I see Tanya is here and uh, other colleagues. Uh, was around an issue that I'm wondering for the last two years what changed because a couple of years ago we were easily uh, finding a theater venue in, in, in Belgrade to bring our productions. I mean there was willingness from I don't know Bitte from Yedapa we never tried but somehow it was always open. It was and it is always open. I mean that's no no question. But let's say we played in BITEF and uh, in other venues, and we felt that you know they are you know welcoming us and they want us. But this changed last two years. We were having, and we are still having hard time to find a theater to, you know, that would want to host us. Technically, uh, two years ago we tried hard with all possible theaters in in Belgrade, with BITEF, with YDP, with that National Theater. We didn't try because that's you know. Too, too big ambition. <laughs> Maybe it, now it, it's possible. <laughs> <laughs> let's see, let's see, that's the question. <laughs> and uh, of course, Tzizekade is, is, is there, but it, <laughs> in some cases, I mean, some of the shows do not fit in, 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 in that specific venue. So then I started to think, what changed in, in Serbia? I mean, what, cha what changed in the political climate in, in Serbia? I mean, is there any big difference? What What is this? Uh, or it's maybe my speculation. Okay. They're in a happy marriage. Yeah, but uh, like <laughs> another example. Let's say last year, just to conclude, in this Mirdita Dobrodan festival, uh, we came here with a show, and the organizers told us. BITEF is confirmed, so we want you a better venue, you know. BITEF is there, so we have BITEF. But then it appeared that they didn't have BITEF at all. I mean, then they didn't want the, the show. Where did you show it in the end? Was it not showed? Tzuzukudu. I mean, in, as I call it, the cultural embassy of Kosovo. <laughs> <laughs> and admit you like plasma. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, what What do you think? Is it possible that we can avoid this um, topic always, that we go back to politics? Yeah, I guess it's impossible, actually, you know, because we are still living in this context. And I mean, we are reading the news every day. So I think it's very escapist also, in a way. Maybe it's, it's, it's kind of... Um, Potent also, like just to neglect it for a while, but still then we know have to know why are we doing it somehow, you know, like then we would all have to agree on this. You just mentioned it as, and, and as soon as you mentioned it, it became somehow, you know, like here materialized. Mm, so, yeah, either we decide for this for a very specific reason, then we can say, okay, we are writers and we really want to discuss the stylistic uh, issues. And I think it's also very legitimate. But as soon as you mentioned it, I think somehow it really changed. And as for your question, 
I, for me, I just came back two years ago. So this is the only climate I could have sensed anyhow. And as soon as I came back, I went to Pristina. I mean, like I was there two years ago in, in the residency. So I, I did not really follow how often, but as you say, then probably, probably uh, pressures were even harder and harder by each new year and with each new elections that we have each year, like that this power in, in one one place was was be becoming more obvious then probably it was more possible to really put pressure on all the theaters i would assume that this is the case because from my point of view it's really relatively easy to always organize guest performance now that i'm in the theater whoever calls and has the means then it's like okay let's do it then so the reason Yes. No, no. But you know, it's only from, from one perspective, of course. Then let's really try. You just send me an offer, I will really try to put it on and then let's see what happens. Really, I, I would be super interested in this and to see really what would happen and who would prevent me from doing so. Uh, can I ask you how much you mentioned that your friends uh, had some comments, how much political uh, you have in your writings, and do you see that maybe also lit literacy can somehow deal with politics in its content, or it should be out <coughs> of it? Well, to start from your question, um, I don't ever mention Vucic when speaking to anyone, because I'm tired of hearing his name everywhere else, so I don't want to be a part of this. But politics is not, um, it's not that. The politics is the fact that I cannot take the tram now where I want to take it or the fact that I cannot, uh, uh, I don't know, um, go down the street that I go all the time because it's being renovated for the fifth time <laughs> in five years. So it influences me on many, many levels that are not just daily politics and uh, agreements that uh, somehow seem far away, but then when they hit you in the head, then you realize that uh, you are essentially part of this. So I agree with Anya. I mean, you can try and talk about style, but you will eventually come back to, um, to, uh, to politics because politics is in your private life. It's in your love life, it's in your social life, uh, it's in everything you do, it's in your family. So um, I, I, I try to be political, but uh, in a subtle way. Um, uh, I, I, um, I realized that uh, in this uh, new book that uh, I've just finished, uh, I have uh, a few poems that I actually uh, mentioned European projects in, because I've been a part of that. And it really struck me, uh, you know, uh, this, um, uh, infrastructure that uh, you know is lingering above my head and that I need to conform to in order to do some things that I wish I could do uh, without being funded uh, and without like uh, ten logos on the you know uh, on the brochure. So uh, I feel that um, you know you 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 have to take this into consideration when writing. You just don't have to point your finger at it. You, have, you can find another way, uh, maybe um, a funny way, you know, as we heard last night, to, to bring it into question. No, I mean, in my case, they are really source of inspiration. If, if, I, you know, if we don't have this kind of political classes, elites, then I'll be failed uh, right, definitely. <laughs> and I think as soon as we can freely uh, talk about them, it's, it's fine. <coughs> the, the problem would be if we were afraid to, to mention them, as it was the case a couple of years ago. I mean, I remember when we had this uh, one flew over the cost of a theater in 2011. Uh, it was Tachi at, at that time, the pre prime minister. And we had the line in the play that the actor was saying, go to hell, Mr. Prime Minister. And it was, you know, big dilemmas. Are we allowed to do that? Can we, can we really have this line in 2011? Then the actor would sometimes use it, go to hell, Mr. Prime Minister, sometimes he would reduce it to go to hell, Mr. Minister, you know, and that, that was fine. But when this uh, show was again on stage two years or three years after, in 2014-15, when thought she was replaced with another Prime Minister, then, you know, we didn't notice that that line, it became part of the normal, it, it was fine. And I think that is some kind of uh, freedom we, we were able to achieve with by insisting by uh, you know 
using what belongs to us, the freedom on stage, that we have to have it. And I think that's the main, main thing that, at least in my case, are trying to achieve, that at least I have this free territory, little uh, uh, meta squares that I can say what I want to say. Because I always have to speak after Yetan speaks. This is a law. Um, I, I must admit that, that there have been quite different situations regarding the conflict between uh, Albanians and Serbians, or between Kosovo and Serbia. Um, there was a there was there was a uh, press news in one of the biggest uh, electronic newspapers in Kosovo that said, "Vucic two points." We should make a deal with the Albanians. And one of the comments, quite quite funny, I must admit, said, uh, look, you did all these crimes. You did this to Albanian women. You killed this, you killed that. and But we want to forgive you. We want to make a deal. We want to make an agreement. So we will uh, accept as a war refund only the recept of plasma. Give us plasma and we're OK. So. <laughs> um, as as uh, tragic as it is, this this uh, story of conflict, I just wanted to add that it also has some funny episodes in it, and it also has some commentable uh, pieces to to be talked about. Maybe it comes from a very dark sense of humor that you would you would equal uh, killed people with. Uh, with a cookie company, uh, or not with a company, just with a, to tell you the way to do the cookies, uh, but it, but it's still human, and uh, yeah, I'm sorry for noting it. It's not really that I had something to say, but I have to talk after yet, and I told you. And I see you were lighting plasma more than uh, whatever. We have some more minutes left, no? Uh, yes, yeah, and okay. after. Uh, Politics, what we um, do is uh, we always go back to reality. So uh, what what do you think if uh, this is possible to have more translations, more communication, and not have projects uh, itself as, uh, as such, but have a system which brings us to the point you also mentioned that there is no system which does this for you. So kind of we are all accidents here uh, to be connected, no? Can you? That's, that's the hardest part, I think, because um, uh, from a position of a Serbian author, getting translated at all to any language is hard. You know, you have to find the, the translator who would first read your book, then uh, like it. <laughs> <laughs> and then recommend it to a publishing house that could actually find uh, the monetary reason to do that because like the publishing houses who actually support young uh, writers um, who are not like uh, populistic writers um, they struggle a lot they struggle with with funding they struggle to survive on the market so um, it boils down to the fact that you you need a network of translators who are willing to explore the, the neighborhood um, literary scene. And um, I think, uh, you know, just what this actual thing happened between Yeton and Tanya, that just proves the point that, that uh, things like this actually make some sparks and connections. So um, I think, uh, yeah, I mean, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, you, you have some actual outcome of, of this debate. There's some literary love in the air now. You should really send us a message for this debate, and I would really like to like, observe what you're talking about. Just do it, please. Really. Yeah. Yeah, you can just start your job. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, you will do me a favor. I don't want to be out of, uh, under any circumstances. So let's just find a way for me to get out. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, but just to say one thing about uh, Maria, what Maria has said. Uh, do you feel that there is a terror of uh, subjects or themes that uh, 
uh, people from the outside expect uh, to read from the writers uh, from the Balkans. What yes. I uh, what I know yes. uh, is that Tea Tulic, you all, I think you many of you know her. She is a Croatian writer and wrote a great debut um, short story slash novel book called uh, Hair Everywhere. It's about uh, the cancer and dying of her mother and. Uh, she uh, and it happens in an unknown city somewhere in the Mediterranean. So it's it's uh, it has absolutely nothing to do with uh, the uh, war, post-war uh, subjects uh, uh, that were dominant for some time. And then she went to sign the optional agreement with the agent in Germany. And as soon as they signed the agreement, the agent told her. Yeah, you know, but this will go hard uh, because people expect to read about uh, war, post-war traumas, uh, war from the position of a child, uh, transition stories, uh, reality, uh, prose, and so on and so forth. Uh, and of course, nothing happened because her novel is more cosmopolitan or more... Uh, yeah, more cosmopolitan than uh, than. Uh, so, uh, do you feel the pressure? Do you think about it when you uh, when you write? Do you think of what can be sold to international market? Uh, yeah, I I absolutely agree with uh, the fact that that is expected, and that is ju not just expected outside, but inside in next few countries as well. You still have uh, competitions that uh, choose the topic of the conflict, blah, 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 blah. So the actual cultural policy even of the competitions or what's <laughs> being awarded is usually under this, like, we need to talk still. And, you know, from the outside, it's not just uh, f uh, f on the on this, like, institutional level. I, I, I met a, a German recently who was telling me about this huge success of um, of a Serbian show to show his like um, willingness to you know connect with me and uh, it's like a, a, a show about the, the the war of course and he was actually genuinely thinking that I should see this because this would really be interesting to me and I was like is it really possible that he thinks that that topic would be interesting to me yeah, you know, it's like, I mean, you know, I've been there, you know, <laughs> so, and it's like, um, and it's like a perverse need to watch, you know, the experience of people who actually, you know, did war, you know, <laughs> like. <laughs> this is Yeton's uh, poem about the German lady with the dog. Exactly, yeah, yeah, exactly, yeah. exactly. I mean, that very line is as accurate as possible. So it's like... Um, you know, we don't get the thrill to, to have a war in our lives, so we want to see it, you know, we want to we wanna have a theater catharsis, you know, to feel better as human beings, you know, you, to show that we are able to empathize with, with these people. But for me personally, that is a political, uh, maybe a political stance I do have in my, in my writing because I do not uh, write uh, things that deal with, uh, at least not uh, directly, with wars or, or post-war. I, I deal with um, the post-war uh, human being as it is in Serbia and some other environments, but not explicitly talking about the war. And I think this is a very important political stance as well, just as it is important, like Yeton said, to to be able to um, you know parody um, the actual reality. I think it's equally important to be allowed to not write explicitly about it, although you cannot ignore it because the human being formed uh, in this environment is a hu political being that is a product of that environment. But, you know, I also had um, a debate with a, with a dear Bosnian friend who is a writer and who insisted that we still need, to, we, we cannot write zombie stories because uh, are we we need to be realistic in our writing and I'm like you're just you know shooting yourself in in your legs I mean you can tell a war story with a zombie story I mean it's like <laughs> so I think um, it's very important that we keep our artist in integrity which is especially hard if you have uh, competitions awards and demands from the markets that expect you to be just 
um, you know, like a post-war uh, series, country citizen, and not a citizen or a woman or a transgender person or a, or a person in love, whatever is your topic or, or whatever. Uh, you just need to to write from the position of a, uh, of you know, like. Thank you. I would like uh, maybe we should do the just the ra last round of comments. There is this movie. Uh, 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 you know, I was um, uh, writing sometimes poems. My dream was always uh, to perform live in front of, of an audience with Ivana Zhigon, and that I think <laughs> would be. A very nice, and for, for those who don't know from Kosovo, who is G Ivana Zhigon, she is uh, their uh, Chunlaichi, so you can imagine. <laughs> and, uh, you know, is it, are you ashamed as artists that Ivana Zhigon makes a better living than you? And, uh, you know, reminding this movie, Turnea, there's always this poet that goes around and he's kind of respected, uh, pathetic guy who does this very powerful propaganda. Yeah, yeah, but, but still. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I know, but I the mean, figure of this poet in the movie is kind of re showing that, not like that she's dangerous. I'm not saying that. She's cute. Yeah, uh, yeah. And why, what happens? She's really preparing this. Sorry for yeah. <coughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. So you see, so I don't know if I, of course, I won't be able to. Yeah. That kind of yeah. Just the the fact that we, you know, it's so normal that she's doing this. She occupied theater now, and she is there for a week, and she will do some. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because she is a member of ensemble. She does not play in any place. Her only task is once per year to do this. Okay, but why? Uh, is there a possibility that uh, uh, you know we we kind of uh, make these people leave from the scene with with doing a bit better? Or how do you see this? Is it this promoted by people or or by politics to kind of uh, also not let other artists be engaged and uh, affect them? Can we affect at all? The only, the only thing I can do right now or as I see it is simply not to appear, not to come to this show and simply somehow to ignore it because we are in a way expected to attend this. Also as the National Theatre also has Slava, all this insanity. So I did not attend this, but maybe I could even go further, but I don't know, like I'm still like trying to feel like what, because like she has a really big basis for this. It's kind of genuinely supported there. They are pissed by her personality, but in a way what she is doing, it's like not questioned. It's okay. She does it. She's a bit difficult person, but so I don't know how could I say this year we are not doing it. Maybe I would be able, but I think I could take the example of uh, Farouk Begoli that you probably, most of you know. In 82, he had this uh, interview in which he uh, said that he loves Belgrade and that he feels like he belongs to Belgrade, uh, something like that. And this was really uh, uh, was taken as, as some kind of act of betrayal in Kosovo, and people there never forgive, forgive him about this. So uh, any time after this, you know, uh, people would say, yeah, yeah, he's a good actor, but, you know, he said that he, he loves Belgrade and he, you know, this is... Uh, not acceptable and so on and so on. And I remember when I uh, interviewed him a couple of weeks maybe before he was he was dying and I asked him, okay, you had this, this quote and you said that you loved Belgrade and he repeated, but I did love and I still love Belgrade. No, it was a matter of choice, it was taking risk. I mean, he didn't want to be not opportunistic to say that it was misused by medias. It was, in fact, misused by medias at that time, but he didn't want to kind of try to repair his figure and to be an Albanian actor or to coquetira, uh, 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 calculate with, with, the, with the audience and, you know, just become some kind of uh, national symbol as most of the uh, uh, artists, especially theater artists, 
wanted to be after the war. So they wanted to be good theater artists, but they also wanted to be national, national figures, national artists. So there was this dirty combination of, of, of art and nationalism. And in, in terms of the institutions, of course, they would mostly support uh, so-called so patriotic uh, art. I mean, if you had an, an application or a project proposal for, for a performance that was dealing with the crimes or whatever, I mean, you, you would get easily support, but it was impossible to, to, to get support for an exchange like this. I mean, still not 20 years after the, the war, and you still cannot finance this kind of exchange through public funds in, in, in Serbia and in Kosovo. So that's the, I think it's a matter of the choice and uh, y you, you have to be, I don't know, brave or stupid, but you have to take some, some risk in you and you have to be clear in yourself that, uh, meaning that you, your figure, I mean, you as a personality will be uh, stigmatized. I mean, you will lose some kind of cred public credibility and this credi credibility comes on and off. I mean, personally, a couple of years ago, I was really, maybe not hated, but people, you know, would uh, connect me as somebody who's collaborating with Serbian artists. And, it, you know, I had lots of comments and critics in medias, really furious, lots of them. Now this changed somehow because the circle of, <laughs> of, of, of traitors is bigger now. I mean, many other people are collaborating and then the audience there is, exactly, it's confused. Okay, even Azem from Drenitz is in going to Belgrade. I mean, then jazz and this and that. So. So that's the that's what I mean. That's the impact of of, of you know of, of exchanges of bringing. I mean, the, the, now they are abusing with this word uh, normalization, mm -hmm. but I think this is what literature, what art, what theater can can do to bring some kind of to, you know this normalization in, in in the relationship by not fearing to say I like you know Belgrade or I like Dokufest in prison or I like. Kosovo macchiatos are the best macchiatos in the world. So if we come to this situation where we, you know, because yeah. yes, so, <laughs> but if this is seen as a normal act, as a normal, you know, thing, then we are in a good way. Otherwise, I don't know. Azem has to talk after him. Just to explain what he said, Azem is from Drenica, and Drenica was the headquarters of Uchepa. Why uh, are you a war veteran <coughs> first, and, and why you didn't go to the army but became a writer? <coughs> because my father did. Um, so, let me explain. Um, I will first relate to Yeton and uh, comment, not because I have to talk after him this time, but because I really have a comment. I really have a comment about that. Uh, first time I, I, I came to Belgrade, it was through Serbia and Col uh, Kosovo Intercultural Icebreakers uh, program for young artists. And I wrote a poem about Belgrade, which I didn't send to you for the event because it is already translated into Serbian. So I didn't want to, I, I, I said, yeah, let's, let's translate something else. Uh, but I will give to everyone who wants it, I will give that poem in Serbian. And it's called For Which Belgrade? And I wrote a pretty precise poem, which Belgrade I admire and which one I don't. Which? Uh, uh, Zilin. Uh, yes. So, to come to your question, um, I come from uh, Drenica, and in both sides of the border, this uh, name rings pretty different bells. I mean, when you say Drenica in Belgrade, I'm aware that you ring the bell for some man with guns in the mountains, I don't know what. Uh, when you say Drenica in Kosovo, or Jakova for that matter, because we have Rona here, when you say the names of these two places, usually you ring the bell for uh, the places with most civilian victims of the war. So this is a pretty mixed uh, cultural context, and I explained that in the interview Boban, uh, Boban had with me in, in Pristina. And when I posted that interview that I was talking for Serbian television, I also got the comment that I am this um, kind of betrayal, that uh, uh, I am so attention whore that I would even talk to Serbian journalists. 
just for some just for some attention now this is the context i'm in and to go even further the application that i submitted for the residency that was generously given to me and i i thank you for that uh, first part of the book is when uh, me and my family excluding my father and my mother uh, so just the kids with my uh, uncle were war refugees in uh, Germany. So I didn't know my parents until I was five. And when I came back to Kosovo, I actually referred to uh, a different person who was not my mother as my mother. They had to explain to me that that, that is not my mother. We will meet my mother later. And, and for this experience and for this kind of book, I am having the residency in Belgrade. Good job. Uh, and but I don't know if the book will be itself a good job. So for for that we will have to wait. But I I cannot I cannot uh, just uh, uh, wait until the book gets published to thank these people for giving me this. I'm not being politically correct for giving me this incredible uh, opportunity to to really taste Belgrade because that is more than important in cultures that precisely re really don't know each other and to end my comment I think a sentence of two or two of uh, the philosopher David Hume would really correct what I said just now uh, and he said every kind of hatred and every kind of uh, judging in basis of ethnics uh, religious or philosophical beliefs comes from uh, ignorance and not knowing. So ignorance is the mother of hatred, of prejudice, of every kind of hate speech directed towards, <laughs> towards, towards a group. Thank you. Thank you very much. So if you stay longer in Belgrade, I tell you, you can get rid of this Trenica thing. So you just get linked to Azem Vlasi forever. <laughs> so that's, that's cool. That's cool. <laughs> that's a good idea. And <laughs> yes, and uh, thank you very much for this. I think we are uh, at the end of mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. You welcome to the club of traders, mm -hmm. and uh, <laughs> see you again. So later, traders no? and normalization are the words, the key words for the writing and of plasma. the project. <laughs> yeah, and plasma. <laughs> thank you very much, and uh, yeah, we'll have lunch uh, in a couple of minutes, and uh, do stay. This is no normal. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and uh, see you tonight. Then thank, thank you. you.